Yeah, he did a live video. That was sick. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I said to record it. I might just record it myself. Oh, yeah, this no, no, it was um short. Who's my cook? I don't know. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. Where's your phone? Because you got my questions. Hey, 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 hey. Waving. Waving. What's happening, people? Lauren, they get mixed up on the touch your screen, you know. Oh! Sorry for the late start, we're usually, we're usually bang on, on the money, but we was um, going through the wrong, the wrong account. I was thinking, where's the people? Um, Kelly, we're going to hang on a, a, just a little bit more before we, we get you on. Because uh, we was late. And we're just sorting out the... Uh, Everything else, you know what I mean? What's happening, people? Today, we are looking at an interesting topic. And we've got a, a, couple, uh, a few interesting topics this week to really hash out. Waving at you. Waving at you all. Um, we've got Kelly, um, Kelly on tonight, who is pretty much our, one of our resident counsellors. Mm -hmm. And she is going to be helping us break the, down. The resident. Council. So far, I guess, yeah. And she's going to be helping us break down. Um, Morgan, how you doing? Um, I need to get clean. I did it. Oh. Helping us break down um, attachment. Taking the veil off our eyes about who we are. Do you Just know what counts. I mean? How you guys doing, though, man? Give us a wave, say something. It's because, it's because Boris let you all out now. That's why I'm going to see you on time. Because people's doing exercise in the dark. It's dark now. It's supposed to be in your bed. <laughs> That's what's happening. So yeah, we're going to break it down today. For those of you who are in, just please share this with your friends. I'm waving at you all. For, for those of you who are in relationships or preparing for this is a topic. Or just chilling. It's for everybody, isn't it? True. And if you're single, I mean, it's for everyone. It's always for everyone. Um, dust. Um, cutie, how you doing? It, this is for you. This, this topic is for you. Why? You're going to take the veil off your eyes, man. You're going to find out a few things about yourself. Do a little self-diagnosis. That's okay. That's okay. Let's, let's bring Kelly on now, isn't it? Mm. How you doing, J. Kess? I hope I'm getting his right, you know. K. Star. Yes, Kelly. Hello. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Got my big headphones. You look like you're gonna you're gonna land the seven four seven, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like being a bit wire free tonight. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's the way. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. It sounds very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. How's your day? Busy. Work is... Uh, this working from home malarkey is not a joke. Yeah, People no. get a little bit twisted. It's what we wish for, but we know what, we don't want to Man, I'm telling you, when the when Boris came out with the announcement, I think it was like <laughs> the 17th of March, I have never run so fast with my laptop and everything yeah. running. Home. Yes, man! Listen, working from home, it's not for the faint-hearted. It's a lot. No, it's not, especially yeah. with children. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah That's why I don't have any of them. I don't have any of them homeschooling friends because they show off too much right now. <laughs> we have got one. Me. <laughs> she, ain't, she ain't my friend. She's your friend. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> them homeschooling people there—they're just making us look bad right now. 
<laughs> and they hear you right now. Yeah, we, <laughs> I'm getting tips from everybody, you know what I mean? Including those who know what they're doing and have been doing it for such a long time. Because um, it's not easy. And I, I respect those who have been doing it for a while, with homeschool. Yeah. I mean, we did homeschool one of our children for a year. Um, but that was that was one. And it was focused on her. But the three, now I've just said to the little one, you will learn through play. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the best way to be honest. You will learn through play. It's not even watch yourself. It's like go in the garden, we'll plant something, we'll do some gardening. I don't even have that kind of time. Yeah, well, even that. But then now I've realised, I give her like a little easy activity in the morning when I'm really focused or we have to wake up earlier. And then by the afternoon, when I've finished, then I go and hit some work with her after that for about an hour and a half. You know yeah, what I mean? Lucky. There's no time for that. I, I just about do bit. Joe Wicks. I just about do do Joe Wicks with the kids. And then I've got to jump on the first team check-in on Zoom. And yes. it's just constant meetings constant. throughout the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. So the kids are usually jumping on my back while I'm trying to, you know, trying to have important discussions. You know what they need to do? They need to do a, a Thursday night Thursday night clap for us parents who are yeah, running yeah. the country whilst at home. Whilst at home. Let's leave them NHS for a little while. It's us. It's us that's running the country. So we're going to start something. <laughs> we're not killing the youths. We're still in. We ain't struggling no one yet. We're still in. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, but you know what? Mm. Um, props to you, you made it tonight, man. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, just, man, always. Just, just saying to the people that after we do a day and we've got kids and then we're going to come on here, this is work. Work and work. <laughs> and work. Yeah. This is work. Um, so yeah. we appreciate the time. Yes. That's okay. See you guys anytime. We said you, <laughs> said you are our residents. You are the resident counsellor. Yeah? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Every so title are, to be carrying, boy. <laughs> we are we are looking for for a word. I know today we're doing um, attachment styles, and I come yeah. across in and out of attachment styles in my work. Um, but yeah. I have to kind of kind of go back and oh, refresh you myself. You didn't, you didn't no, no, you're, you're all right. Soon, soon, I just wanted to put in a little bit. I, I just had to go back and refresh myself and realize how deep this thing is. Yeah, um, so, so did I. I guess, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting prepared. Yeah. Put, holding the meds, putting the seatbelt on. Always holding the meds, man. Holding Always the holding the meds. The yeah. on. As, 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 as Miro Lynn just said, you are our Dr. Phil. You get me. Oh Miro. my God. So <laughs> Dr. Phil is going to be <laughs> today. I'm oh you, I'm dear. No I don't know. It's just my it's just my humble experience, you know. Mm. Um, that's, that's, that's all I'll be bringing and, you know, lit bits and pieces that I've, that I've read, you know. Knowledge is power, as they say, but yeah, um, yeah. awareness is, you know, is really the key. Yeah. So, yeah. But you've also got experience, though, and your studies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're, personal you're... experience, uh, therapeutic experience in terms of what I've seen in the counselling room, mm -hmm. uh, what I see with families, what I see with my family, <laughs> you know. <laughs> just... Here we go. <laughs> Everybody, yeah. Well, I, I, I but, mean, I love the way you work and the way you teach is that you go in and out of theory to personal experience, back to yeah. observation, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's key because it, it does put us in touch with your human side where it's like, actually, she's not sitting here talking above everybody and saying, I know everything, mm. but I am all that because yeah. I am who I am. But that actually, I've seen this work. I've seen... Yep. how this story is played out in my life. Do you know what I mean? And how you mm. can work through it. So that's why we appreciate your approach. Oh, you're welcome. So, I just do it based on how I see it. I'm not yeah. very, like, despite the fact that, you know, you we have to study a lot of theory, we have a lot of papers to read. There's stuff coming out all the time. And sometimes I'm just like, oh, just I just... Jargon. I, I struggle with jargon. I, yeah. I struggle with sometimes too much words. For me, the best way for me to understand information is if it's broken down layman's terms. Yes. So, you know, there's, I have loads of books, but then there's like a few books that I can say, 
actually, yeah, I, I, I get it. It makes sense because of the way how it's, how it's delivered. It's delivered, you know, in a way that I can understand, that I can digest because they use lots of um, real life experiences, a lot of case studies. Yeah. Then that's when, to <laughs> me, it comes, that's when theory then comes, comes alive. Yeah, so yeah okay. yeah well here we go okay let, let do we're looking at attachment right but we're gonna break yeah. it down okay we are gonna i told them already we're gonna peel these these um scales no, that, that we're gonna clean these scales with our eyes because pe pe <laughs> okay. people are people are this is my opinion now people are walking blind um a lot of the time um, people mm. are arguing yeah, with each other, possibly. Yeah. People are arguing with each other. Yeah. They don't understand what they're really doing. Yeah. They, people haven't even understood where they are coming from. Mm. So whether you're single, married, or divorced, or whatever you are, dating, understand you need to know yourself. Absolutely. Say, Kelly, First Kelly. and foremost. Right. First and foremost, if you don't know yourself, then you can't really expect somebody else to know you. And what we're going to talk about today is some foundational, fundamental breakdown of a little bit of the psychological, um, for us to understand why we do what we do. Mm. Real? Real? Attachment. Um, attachment is is us looking at how we bonded with our parents and the way that we bond with our parents. And the thing is, we won't know this until we actually ask these questions, right? Yeah. The way that we bond with our parents mm. determines or has a great influence on how we function as adults. Absolutely. Down to, and I'm not going to conclude anything, I'm just going to bring you in. Down to um, the way we argue, if we argue, why are you feeling so sad? Why are you so self destructive? Kelly, you're going to break it down, man. Go for yeah. it. Before, oh, 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 oh. Before Kelly breaks it down, don't forget, you guys, you can ask your questions mm -hmm. in the box. Sometimes they're running very, very fast. But we'll pin as much as we can. Mm -hmm. um, we'll stop in some sections to, to, to get yeah. to ask these questions. So we, what we don't want to do is cut off, go into another live, and then we've missed your questions. Yeah, we'll try. So we'll keep an eye on your questions, and then we'll keep an eye. If Kelly has a window, we'll sneak some of them questions in there. Sure. So, Kelly, uh, we talked about a, a case study, right? Mm. And I remember, I forgot, but I remember <laughs> what I thought at the time, right? I am that case study. You're the case study? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll do it. You ready? I, I, listen, I'm learning to have less shame in life. Amen. <laughs> I, I'm learning to care less what people think. All right. Kelly, why am I so dysfunctional? We'll come back to you later on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you for free. No, you ain't saying nothing. Because you're just gonna, you're just gonna skew it. So, so, Kelly, why, what, what, why, why is attachment so important? Attachment, it makes up, it, it, it it's our blueprint, mm. and how we, how we are able to interact and engage you know interpersonal relationships with each other mm. um we we have to we ha we have to have a base so when a new baby comes into the world um a new baby comes into the world you know needing guidance yeah they can't survive unless you feed the baby you know, they need to understand your facial expressions, your, you know, in terms of your responses, um, you know, everything, you know, to, to help this child to grow and develop and understand the world. And, and the way how they understand the world is based on their interactions with their parents. I always say that that is the blueprint. Your relationship with your parents is the blue, is the blueprint to how you will then engage in intimate relationships but I don't think it's necessarily always just restricted 
just to intimate relationships, but relationships, you know, as you grow and as you get older. Mm. And depending on the kind of attachment that you would have had as a child, you know, has such a massive impact, you know, on, you know, how you conduct yourself in, in, in relationships. So when clients come to me, whether it be um, a couple or an individual, and I think I've said this before, that, you know, the main basis of my work, when people come to, to my practice, then the main basis of my work is I'm, although I'm an integrative counsellor, which, you know, comprises of lots of different types of theory in counselling. So like there's things like, you know, gestalt chair work, uh, transactional analysis, CBT, person-centred, psychodynamic there's there's so much so being integrative means in that you can use lots of different types of models according to the needs of the client so again nhs you know people will you know often go for counseling via the nhs and that's usually cbt and that's usually here and now dealing with like you know trying to interrupt kind of um, negative thought patterns mm -hmm. but the real for me how i work is I, I would class myself as quite more kind of psychodynamic. So psychodynamic deals with your history. Yeah. It deals with your childhood. For me, that's, that's, that's the foundation. That's the basis of trying to understand why someone's come into the counselling room saying, I'm feeling depressed or I'm, or I'm feeling anxious or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the situation is or if couples are coming in there's, you know, discourse within the relationship. The first thing that I do is I do a detailed assessment on adverse childhood experiences. So I have a questionnaire for that um, because that's very important to understand if people have experienced trauma because that's another layer. Um, and also I do another assessment, which is about family functioning it's a family functioning um, assessment where there's a series of questions and you circle it from one to, I think, one to five, one to ten, meaning, you know, yes or, or, or you know, the spectrum of yes or no, basically. And that then helps me to then break down and understand what it is that I'm dealing with. And what I would generally do, I will ask specific questions. I do genograms, so I do the family trees to try and understand, you know, what's going on, you know, what's happened. Are there any kind of themes? Because often what happens is, you know, we think that we're born into a family and, you know, I do this just because. But often when you look back at your family tree and you're looking back at, you know, your grandmother, great grandmother, you know, grandfather, great, there's, there, there are themes that are running through. Is that yeah, what we you know? call, call the scripts, family scripts? Yeah, yeah, so there are family scripts or they call it family pathology. Yeah. So, um, so these are kind of patterns of behaviours and usually that's based off of um, trauma, you know, trauma or, you know, um, it might be mental health. Do you know what I mean? There's lots of different things that are going on in domestic abuse. There's so much things, even down to maybe the kind of gifts and talents that you have, because it doesn't necessarily have to be negative. It can be seen as a positive as well. You look at, you know, maybe gifts and talents that you might have. I'm really good at cooking. Hold on a second. Your grandmother, your mother, your grandmother, your auntie, you know, Somewhere along the line, you'll see certain similarities in yeah. maybe some, you know, in the way that you, you know, in the way that you are. So it can be used as positive and negative. So, but generally, when people are coming into the counselling room, we're trying to kind of explore and pull apart Pandora's box. And um, yeah, I ask lots of questions, might be quite annoying in the questions that I do ask, but I make a point of using that as my base of, okay, I can see how we've gone from point A to where we are now, point Z. Can you Z. give me an example of a question you would ask 
somebody who came into your therapy room and you would you did the ace with them and you did um, the program, what kind of question would you be asking? Right. So maybe one of the questions I'm trying to think now. Um, were you as a child? Did you was an adult close to you or like a caregiver? Um, did they say things to you to put you down? So you know, were they quite negative towards you? If the answer is yes, then what can then happen is is then when you plot that you know, you know the person now as an adult, how do they function? How do they see themselves? Do they have high self-esteem or do they have low self-esteem? Do they have negative messages that go into their head that they're not good enough? You know, as that, just as a, a very brief example, you know, and then do they end up in situations where that message of maybe not being good enough is solidified? It's almost like, well, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. This is what it is. I'm not good enough. So, you know, because if that's something that you're used to hearing, you may nest, you may attract that. Yes. You know, as opposed to being able to kind of be with somebody who might be quite positive, who may, you know, want to give you, you know, lots of positive affirmation, but you may find that uncomfortable because that's not your norm. Yes. So you may then kind of attract and go towards, you know, um, an individual who may fit a mold of what you're used to. So it might be you may pick up somebody who may have similar characteristics as maybe your father, do you know what I mean? Who may have been quite negative towards you, do you know what I mean? Because so, you, because and it's not conscious. Is it, yeah, because it's because it's, it's, it's all you know. Yeah, yeah, it's familiar. It's all you know. You don't know anything else. It. It. I think it takes um, some serious kind of self work to be able to recognize that, mm -hmm. to recognize it, but also to be able to um, to own it with no heat and any judgment on yourself to just say, look, this is, this is where I'm at. Actually, I don't feel good about myself. I actually, I have told myself that I don't feel good because I don't. And this is, you know, I'm, you know, I seem to be around people who kind of, you know, reinforce that. So yeah, that, that, that's where I'm at. Do you know what I mean? And, and that can be really tough to be able to, own it and and you know and be able to tell yourself that the true gut-wrenching truth because nobody wants to be caught out no one wants to get caught slipping yeah you don't want to be you want to be out here you know what I mean you know kind of showing people oh I don't feel great about myself that's not you know that's not how we want to live we want to always show our best selves but are we truly authentically being our real best selves mm -hmm. do you know what I mean or are we actually telling ourselves a lie and once we're able to kind of own that truth, then there we then start the work of how do we now change that narrative, that negative narrative? Because what happens is, is we tell ourselves stories. So, you know, maybe, you know, your parents started with the story. So there was the beginning and then you go through different experiences and here's the middle. And then you get to the point where you, you know, you've come to the conclusion of, yeah, this, this is, this is who I am. And once you then come to the end of that, the end of that particular story and you realize actually hold the bus a second, mm -hmm. what's actually really going on out here? And again, a what, lot what of it is, is well, around... give me the story. What's the story, for example? Well, you know, some people can have like, like life changing situations. Maybe they might have a child or maybe they enter like a really difficult relationship that then flags up all of their insecurities in their face. And it's and it's so it's so painful and it's so intolerable but then you can't run away from it anymore you actually have to kind of address it yeah. you might have you know a moment where you start to you know age age also has something to do with it you know sometimes as you start to get a little bit older we go through different milestones where we start to change we might start to see things differently we might start reading and start really holding some meds you know and start thinking actually I'm not really happy out here. I want, I want something different. So it could be like, I want to get a new job. Yeah. But then to go down the road of trying to get a new job, 
you have to start looking at yourself you've got to start looking at your skills and you've got to then start looking at your insecurities and you know your, your you know your skills your talents and things like that then you know you might have to then start to address you know particular things you know well, you know what then let, let me throw this in there because um sometimes because as we're looking at attachments sometimes um because you said it's from a young age mm. that we have to build an attachment to our parents. So I said that, I think that you concurred. And, and the way that we attach to our parents, which is something we're going to look at in a minute, mm. um, did, has a major impact on how we turn out as adults and how I, and you know, now I'm married to Anita. Okay, we're going to look at me later. But now I'm married mm. to Anita. Uh, Kelly laughing, you know, because she knows it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be deep, right? All right, I can take it. So now, so now, so now, Winita and I are a bit. It's been months now, a couple of years that we ain't even really talking properly. Yeah, we just got married. It's just not working. Like she's having this same problem with me, and I look back and I, I look at an example of a lot of our uncles who are about 10, 15, 20 years older than us, they were sent here by their mums, mm. right? And when they're sent here, you can imagine coming from, say, the West Indies, there's a lot of poverty back in the 50s and 60s. Mm. And so poverty will affect you. Like, you're stressed, right? You're thinking, man, I've got to make food from nothing. There's no money. I've got to work. I've got to try and study. I've got three kids. How do I do it? And so that bonding process is interrupted, surely. Mm. And so we've got a lot of uncles, I reckon, who are dysfunctional. <laughs> oh, you laugh because yeah. why? Oh, dear, dear. No, I, I, even as you're, as you're saying that about the uncles, and I remember West Indies specific looking back and seeing several, and even now the ones who are still around, um, or granddads, just kind of sitting there, always in the chair, yeah, just with a cigarette, just somewhere else. Yeah. You know what I mean? maybe only come alive when his horses are running on a Sunday. Yep. Or the boxing, Standard. or the wrestling with Big Daddy. Yeah. And Giant Haystacks is, is, is killing ITV. Do you know what I mean? ITM, Snoop, then? Snooker. We don't know what it was called. London Thames Network. Mm. And that's when he comes alive and he gets his dinner and he gets his toothpick and he doesn't say anything else for the rest of the day. Until you walk in front of that TV as a little kid and you get a lash. Yep. And I'm thinking about him, and I remember T.D. Jakes preaching a sermon years ago called The Silent Scream. And he spoke about that he was, I think he was somebody, like, he was feeding his fish. And that they were changing the water, and I think somebody put hot water in the tank. Mm. And, oh. Yeah, and the fish died, obviously. But it was like, did the fish scream? I mean, mm. we would never know, do you know, what, what, how it sounds underwater. So he was likening that to a lot of our relatives our, our grandparents our uncles our great uncles who are just like that fish who inside are screaming oh yeah absolutely. oh man that one had us in tears inside yeah. absolutely screaming but we'll yeah. mask it you know with the with the beds and the edges till it's right at the edge mm. Mm. with it with the, the kind of special brew i remember it clearly in my childhood do you know what i mean with um horse racing wrestling and um maybe giving his wife a few of those and that was he as strong as he looked as strong as you thought he was was actually weak mm. do you know what i mean and but then you're not but you're not allowed to though are you you know no. you you know when you think of you know what life was like for you know and I'll just say in terms of, you know, let me just own my own, but I'm sure everybody can think of kind of relatives who weren't born here, you know, where your family, you know, came from, whether it be Africa, whether it be the Caribbean, it could be anywhere, do you know what I mean? Um, but I'll look at, I'm just going to just own it myself, you know, to just try and understand it better, you know, there were no words for emotions and, and attachment is something that didn't really, it, it wasn't really recognised. Um, for children to be left behind, in the Caribbean in particular, mm -hmm. you know, 
they were left with aunties, grandparents, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, at times. To come to the UK, you know, in their heads, in their minds, I believe that, you know, their their best interest was, look, we've got to try and make some money to kind of, you know, survive, you know, and with the best kind of, you know, um, intent, it was to kind of like, you know, go make a little bit of money for a couple months or a year or so and then come back or, you know, whatever. But then they had no idea what they were coming to. Do you know what I mean? And then what they came into was trauma. So they, they came they came from trauma. Yes. And then they came and faced more trauma on yes. trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma. But then you're not allowed to talk about it. You can't talk about it. Um, it's you know, you just have to just get on with it. Yeah. And I think, and, and and when I kind of understand it, even if I understand it from my own personal vibe, you just have to get on with it. And I remember growing up with the same kind of attitude, you just have to get on with it. So you, you have no time to kind of, you know, own or understand your feelings. You know, it, it, it must have been incredibly difficult. Yeah. And having children now, you know, takes it to a whole nother level. It's like... I think about, could I really leave my children behind and go to a land that I don't know and work, you know, obviously in my head, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, I just got to make some money for the, you know. But then I, the, the, I, the attachment from my children is then broken. Do you understand? But you don't, you don't see it that way and you don't understand it to that degree. And, you know, in your head, you know, you're always mum, you're always dad, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, there are kids like my mum and dad. My mum didn't meet her parents until she was nine when she came here. My dad was 11 when he wow. came here. And their parents just went straight in as being parents. being a parent as though they as though they'd always been there. Do you understand? Bear, never mind the fact that years had lapsed. Yes. And they'd both been through so many experiences up until that point. They were strangers, mm -hmm. you know? So even looking at it from that kind of level, the attachment has already been disrupted. Yes. And, and how do you repair? How do you repair such an attachment, you know, such a crucial attachment? Because, you know, if you look back at John Bowlby, so looking at it in, in the theoretical sense, now, I look at John Bowlby, I look at Mary Ainsworth, who did those studies on infants, you know, just understanding kind of attachment between particularly the mother, do you know what I mean, mother and child, and how important those first year, the first year is, never mind the first kind of like three years, do you know what I mean? And even then, if there's, um, if there's a broken attachment in that point, I've worked with families where attachment has been broken within the first three years, and these teenagers now are completely off the rails, and they have no... They, they, they don't understand their emotions. They, they, they have a really kind of disorganized or, dis, you know, um, an insecure attachment or ambivalent attachment to their parents. Okay. Because there was, a, there, was, there, was a, there was a, there was a, there was a broken attachment. Let me, let me catch you there because we're going to break them, we're going to break them down, right? Okay. All right. We're going to break them down. Um, we work with kids in the system, young offenders, and mm. you can see that some parents, and now, I was talking about history, guys, just because I know some of you aren't probably fully aware of what attachment is. We're going to break it down for you in a moment. But it's happening every day. Every this, day. This is not about history. This is about the present and history combined, and the future. So, so someone here, 256 Locks, has said, being left behind as a child who has been through it, only processing it now as yes. an adult. Do you and know understand. something? That is, that is so correct. Yeah. Now... My mum, let me give my mum's age. My mum's sixty-four. Yeah, my mum came here as a as a as a <laughs> as a as a nine-year-old. Sixty, you know what I mean? She came here as a nine-year-old. Yeah. Do you know that her and her mother, in particular, they never the connection was so difficult, and it's only you know my mum as a you know as an older woman. She's starting to understand how her early life experiences and that broken attachment from her mum led to a really difficult relationship with her mum. Yes. 
it was it was it's very it was very ambivalent mm. and when i say ambivalent you know my mum kind of never knew when she should do something or not you know my grand you know would one minute she wants her the next minute she doesn't you know it's very so my mum always said i never knew where 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 you know where, where i could feel safe you know and this is my mum learning and understanding this in her later years do you understand so yeah it it, it can take you up to an adult yeah. for you to be able to kind of work through that you know and it takes a, a, a serious amount of work you know and never mind if there's like a significant amount of trauma attached to it as well then you know that's a whole that's a whole nother yeah. kind well, of thing that you're dealing with well it's interesting because we're working with these parents and families rather we're really working with families and you can see that although the mother, because the father's usually missing, although, yeah. although the mother isn't there, sorry, although the mother is there on a daily basis and provides food, there is a connection with that child that isn't made. Yeah. That's in my personal observation. And that, that connection, I'm talking about the attachment. It represents the attachment of the parent to the child. So yes, I'm here every day, but we've never had a connection. Yeah. And that is where we're going. So can we break down some of these attachments? I don't know if you've got those, you know. You so I've got a couple of, so, yeah, there's, 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 um, there's different types. Hold on a minute. I've had a book. I've got my book here. And I'm trying to see what I am um, looking for. So there's secure. So there's a secure attachment. So this secure attachment is, you know, a child who's had, you know, a real, relatively really kind of loving relationship with their parent who's always been emotionally available, um, who's been able to respond appropriately to, you know, emotional cues. So when the child is crying, they have an understanding of, you know, what, why that child might be crying. You know what I mean? That, that's, so, that's seen as a, as a secure attachment. There is, let me just try and, do you know Look as you're saying different that, ones. as yeah. you're saying that as you're given the attachments are you can you later um kind of emphasize how these attachments show up in relationships yeah, yeah. or or yeah. you're just going to briefly touch them now and then we'll dig into it later yeah right, yeah. yeah thank you so i'm just trying to find the um the attachment styles um so there's secure there's um do you know what? I had avoidant. it on There's avoidant. Yeah. yeah There's yeah, ambiv am, um, ambivalent. Yeah. yeah. Um, and is it um, anxious avoidant? Anxious so they've got some, time. yeah, they've got, yeah, yeah, which things. is, yeah. yeah, but it's usually anxious avoidant. Yeah. So, yeah. So those are like kind of like the main kind of attachment yeah. styles. I'm pretty sure there's more as time's gone on more yeah. theories and more journals are coming through people are, are researching it more but those are the main kind of attachment styles that you'll probably learn in in childhood um so, so yeah so what that shows you, so, so, mm. so so shall we because we've got a list here um, Go right ahead so shall we read out what they are in in their, in yeah. their style yeah, yeah. Right. Are you, are you, you're a better reader than me oh well, no i'm not Secure, it says here, but then I, I took it from the angle of how you are in relationships now. So that's fine, that's fine. Is that all right? No, that's fine. That's I just fine. took basic notes. I mean, you've studied this for years, but um, the basic yeah. notes are the secure, they, so people with secure attachment, it says, have a great advantage in love. It said they are honest, um, they are open, and they're willing to work on like an equal. Uh, footing I think it says mm -hmm. uh, they they grow at a healthy pace mm -hmm. they have high emotional intelligence they're willing mm -hmm. to problem solve and are highly resilient everybody's gonna say that's me <laughs> <laughs> so you you could you could add or take away to every time I read one so is there anything you would add or take away uh, no no that that sounds about right yeah, the second it sounds one, about right. they called it something different. They called it anxious preoccupied. You, you gave it another yeah. one, right? I gave it anxious avoidant. Anxious avoidant. Okay, it says mm. here, they usually romanticize love. Um, they, they, they're quite complex. Uh, they're blindly demanding. 
uh, turbulence, um, they will assume turbulence in a relationship, they look at it as passion mm. um, and they have limited boundaries. Mm. Ah, look, the husband and wife's club, they, they put it down as well. So they Secure, gave us autonomous, avoidant, yeah. dismissing, yeah. anxious, preoccupied and disorganized and unresolved. <laughs> yeah. Different names, yeah. Different names in, in yeah. within that like, different fields, I suppose. Yeah. And then the third one said dismissive avoidant. It says they avoid true intimacy. Yeah. They're self sufficient. They yeah. push away and they avoid. Um mm. they shut down and they have very few close relationships with others. And then the fourth one which this study called fearful avoidance so that mm. there's a fear of being close to someone and also far away from their lover um they're unpredictable they're mm. overwhelmed by their own emotions they fear abandonment and they struggle with being confident with their partner yeah uh, they're wanting and resisting intimacy at the same time mm. um, and they can end up in abusive relationships uh because they are looking for uh, a love that they're used to. Um, so yeah, that's in summary, that was just bullet points. As I said, you were well studied in it. So could we kind of break open a little bit of each? I know we haven't got much time, but if we could break open a mm. little bit of each, if you could start from secure and how that affects going into relationships, uh, into committed relationships, into adult relationships, into intimate relationships. Well, into, if we look at specifically into intimate relationships, you know, somebody who's secure has a healthy sense of themselves. So they have quite so, um, high self-esteem, quite high confidence within themselves. Um, they're aware of what they like, of what they don't like. They might be um, aware of, you know, what's negotiable and what's not negotiable you know, in terms of maybe before entering into a relationship. So they go in, so they might go into a relationship and maybe all people may think that they do, that they, that they do exactly the same thing. They really evaluate themselves before going into a relationship. But somebody who is truly, I suppose, secure within themselves, they're able to ask for what it is that they want from a relationship. They know what they want from a relationship. But eat, not only that, they're, they're very present, they're able to give. So I, I always heard about, you know, going into a relationship, you don't go into a relationship to get, you go into a relationship to give, mm -hmm. yeah? So if you're giving already from a full cup, then, you know, you know that you're giving of your best self because you already give your best self. If that relationship is not really, mm, actually, I'm not really feeling, do you know what, actually, I think, as much as I really like this person, actually, I love me more. So actually, I'm going to I'm gonna head in the opposite direction. Do you know what I mean? And that's just as a very brief example of maybe somebody who's very secure within themselves. And I guess there could be a fine line that people may say, oh, they're just being selfish. But actually, if you really examine it and break it down, yeah. they generally have a really health set you know, sense of self, you know, yeah. they, do you know what I mean? You know, they really, you know, they really love themselves and not in a condescending or egotistical way, but they genuinely have love for themselves. They genuinely try and give themselves the best so they can then in turn give them, give others the best of them. Do you know what who, I mean? Who, it's, who it's, creates, who creates such a child? Oh dear! You well, know, well, well, this, we're well, this, we're all out here thing. trying, aren't we? <laughs> we, we? We have to make it clear again is that um, these attachments or these 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 um these are, are parts of people's character. These are created within the first few years. So the way that a parent will bond and the type of relationship that they will have with their child for the first five six years is where we see how it is. Yeah, I I get that, mm. but I, I'm saying, where does that child come from? Is it, did they eat kryptonite? I don't know. Is it is it Superman? 
Because... No, I guess because you, I guess it's about it's about when you when you have your children, you often learn about yourself when you yes. have your children, because yes. your children just reflect who you are, yes. you know. And mm. and I and 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 I say it because I'm in it. I have my two beautiful girls, and I feel like they show me different parts of me that I struggle with. And yes. I'm constantly confronted with myself mm. to then recognize, Kels, you got to get your ish together. Yes. You know what I mean? Because they're showing you, you know what I mean, who you are. And actually, I want them to have a healthy sense of themselves. So you know something? Me, I've got to figure it out. I've got to figure myself out. I've got to do some work here. But at the same time, while I'm doing that work, I need to push past my comfort zone and I need to really love on these children. You didn't see me today chasing my kids around when <laughs> they were doing the most, you know what I mean? Trying to pick one up and, you know, generally my girls are good. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I think, I think, I think Corona has definitely, has, it's been a well, bit of a struggle best. for everybody. Yeah, it's been a struggle for everybody. But genuine, genuinely... My girls are very expressive and do you know what? I welcome it all day long. My seven-year-old will tell me about myself, you know, in her childlike way. Yeah. And as much as I may not like to hear it, it's very important for me to listen because there's valuable tools, there's valuable gems in what she's saying, but also as well, how am I going to support her to grow up and have a healthy sense of herself so she then doesn't you know, go down the road of seeking that love that she should get, that she should have got from me, that I should have then built up in her. She then goes and looks for, you know, externally, as opposed to having such a, you know, healthy sense of self. Do you I know think, what I mean? Yeah. And feeling good about herself, you know? I think I was asking that question, like, who is, where it, that is such a parent to be found, what can create secure attachments in their children? I was asking that question because I'm thinking about the many centuries of trauma that our people as black people have gone through. Yeah. The people from the African diaspora that we have gone through centuries of yeah. traumatic um, abuse. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, mm. when I say I look back to granddad or uncle sitting down, He's a product. smoking the, the Benson edges and he's somewhere else in his head. What I'm saying there is that it wasn't far from us. And did it stop with you because you picked up a, a book in the field of counselling? Or, or or did your mum without the book start thinking, hang on, we've got to do things different? Because yeah. my mum changed yeah. the trajectory, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just before we did. And then yeah. even now, even though we, we, we work with this day in and day out, I still have to check myself mm. and look at my attachment styles with all three of my children. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that when I'm thinking of that, sorry, unfortunately, such a person who has a secure attachment styles, I think you can often drift off into like a, in my head, I can see a European family who has lots of money, lots of time, lots of energy, and they're the ones who are creating secure attachment styles. Because no, see, people. I don't believe that. But I, I don't believe that. Clear, I yeah, like I don't, I don't, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I don't, I don't believe that. Ones. I was thinking, can no. we get attachment styles out of, tra out of traumatic past? Can we still create those? We, we can. It's, it's about awareness. You, you, it's about being able to, it's about being aware of yourself and aware of what you're bringing to, in, into the arena. What are you bringing into the arena? Who are you? Do you know what I mean? You know, you have to, you have to look at yourself. You've got to then, you know, also try and understand some of the patterns that maybe your mum did. Do you know what I mean? And some of the things that your mum did, is, is that being, is, am I, am I doing exactly the same thing? Because we are doing, generally, we are doing exactly the same thing, yeah. even though sometimes we get it to, I don't want to be like my mum. I remember moanings. I'm not going to be like moany old uh, woman there. After, I'm after the same, same one. After you've had to catch some licks. Do you know what I mean? But my thing yeah. is, is that actually I make the same amount of noise as my mum yeah. did. Yeah. Hold on a minute, Kels. This isn't where, this isn't where you want to be. Yeah. 
and it's about awareness so yes we've experienced trauma and i've said this time and time again for me the awareness came where i said you know what it stops with me I, I don't want it to go any further. It has to stop with me. But when it stops with you, that's that's a that's a whole generation, whole load of different generational trauma that you've actually got to then deal with. It's stuff that's within that's held within you that you've got to work through. And it, you know, it it's a never ending journey. So you can change. You, you can change. You can. It's it's a yeah, it's 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 about awareness, it's about you know, you have to create kind of like the conditions, the right kind of conditions to be able to move from point A to point B. We've got a few, so, a few things that people have said here. What, so what, what questions have we got? Attachment isn't, fi isn't fixed through one's life. No. There can be secure attachment as a child that is damaged due to significant events. Yes, and that's, that's true. That's Pippa Fox who does that on a daily. So I know mm -hmm. what she's talking about. Husband and that wife is true. says, I believe your attachment history plays a crucial role in determining how you relate in adult romantic Absolutely. relationships and how you relate Absolutely. to, to your children. Going. And then here it says, do you believe that having one missing parent would affect the forming of such an attachment? It makes it, it, makes it difficult because men and women right. play different roles in a child's life. Mother and father play, play different roles in a child's life. Both roles are very, very crucial. So mum, you know, there's always that, you know, mum is like mum and dad. Yeah. More power. Yes, absolutely. You know, they look after the children. They go out to work. They do all the necessary things to bring up these children. But then there's that masculine energy that's missing. Yes. That's, that's necessary. How do you understand how to you know when you're in a instant when you're in a in a romantic relationship you're with your boyfriend or you or you or you're with your husband how do you understand how to live with that partner if you've never experienced masculine energy even as a as a child do you understand yes. you're you're then learning on the job aren't yes. you and yeah. you, do you know what i mean and 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 it becomes difficult it's not impossible but it is difficult yeah, many people come into my counseling room where there's, you know, they might have been raised by one parent or the other, or maybe both parents, but one was just not emotionally present. My dad was in the home until I was 13. My dad was emotionally completely unavailable, yeah. wasn't, wasn't present. When it came to dropping licks, he was there, <laughs> you know what I mean, with, with bells on, yeah. but there was no... There was no kind of, I, I, I didn't know him. I didn't understand. I didn't get to learn and understand my dad until I was in my late 20s, mm. you know? So that was many years past. So, yeah, it, 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 it can work. But there's, again, it's about awareness. It's about what are you willing to do in order to change yes. for the better? Yes. And that can be, and that's where it can be, it can be really tough. Yes. Because you then have to go all the way back to come forward often to your childhood yet yeah, in order to come forward mm -hmm. on a different you know it's almost like you want to tear up the blue the blueprint that you that you've you know that you've come with here's my blueprint that you brought from childhood and you then want to tear it up to create a new one that's going to be tough because there's always going to be triggers it's going to be difficult to it's about recognizing it recognizing your triggers and trying to learn to maybe build new habits mm. in order to try and adopt and do something mm. different. It also takes the patience of that partner, the partner that you're with. Yeah. Because often we all come together, you know, with our, um, with our isms and schisms, you know, and we all grow at different rates. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we grate on each other. Was yeah. there right there? Look, we've got we've okay. done an hour, you know. Oh, we're gonna wow. have to go to the next one. And I, 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 I you, <laughs> we have to. I, no, I know. I want to go into the other ones, but I have we got the questions? We've got we've we've answered some. Yeah, we've the answered main the bulk questions. anyway. Yeah. I think okay. when you were saying we'll grow, we'll grow at different rates. Um, we do. It's going to It's just useful to know. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> we no, no. Here, here we go. Listen, we're going to look. We're going to cut off at like ten oh four. That's an hour. Oh, let's just do it because yeah, like I, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking too much. Sorry, 
we're going to answer this right in the context of relationships. We're going to look at the yeah. other three attachments, how they kind of play out. We're going to look at how to overcome and change them if it's even possible. Um, with you, Kelly, in 10 seconds' time. Yeah, so ten listen, seconds, ten seconds. guys, we're gonna we're gonna change this live. Come back on. Same channel. In same ten view. seconds' time, we're gonna look at how this affects us in the future and in the present. See you in a sec. In a sec. That wasn't right. It won't be able to see. It's gonna cut you anyway. But it's actually there for now. Oi. Let's get into it, man. Whoa. Thank you for coming back and learning with us. No, no, this is serious. Like, you need to know your past, man. We're going to wait for you to... Uh, we're just going to wait a second. Kelly, we'll come to you in a second. We, we're going to look at the other three attachment styles and how you might be playing them out and then we're going to have a quick look at me. Ooh, exposing myself, but I'm cool with that. Um, it is important. We have to know our, a little bit about our past, why we do what we do. Why do you react like that? Why do you react the way you do? Why are you making those same? Your questions in still. We are pinning them. We are grabbing Grabbing yeah. onto them and reading them out. Well, well you know, some of us are, are, have got it together. I know that we've got it together. How are we doing that? Kelly? Hello. Um, can, can we have a look at some more attachment styles? The second one okay. was anxious, preoccupied. And that was us romanticizing love. Um, kind of avoiding the complex, I think it was. Blindly demanding and we mistake turbulent relationships for passion and have limited boundaries. Mm. So that could be, so you can look at domestic, like domestic abusive relationships as, you know what I mean, as um, like an anxious kind of avoidant, you know. Um, you may know that, you know, what you're living in, you're not happy with, but then is it the you know it's 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 tough isn't it because you know you think oh you know you you mistake that kind of you know the fighting or or you know the treatment as yeah he actually loves me without actually understanding that actually you know you're you're in an abusive in a in a in, a, in an abusive situation yeah. so then how do you then kind of move yourself from that because there's usually a cycle, especially in domestic abusive relationships where um, the abuse might happen, then, you know, they go through a cycle of, you know, really, you know, feeling like they want to leave, you know, we, I, we've, I've seen it, you know, seen it time and time again, where, you know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not putting up with this, I'm leaving. Yeah. And then the other partner then senses that and then they come back and they're like, oh, well, actually, it wasn't that bad, really. And, you know, really and this bad? is not to down and that's not to downplay the experience. But this is just about the cycle of abuse, how how it how it happens. So it's about it's, you know, it's that anxiety of, you know, what would life look like if they weren't in a relationship like that? It, it's almost intolerable, you yeah. know, but then they're in a, in a situation where, you know, they're, they're not being treated the way that they should be, be treated, you know? So yeah, that can be really, really, really difficult to kind of work through because it can, it takes a lot of strength for somebody to be able to recognize, you know, that kind of pattern and to remove themselves from the situation. But then there's equally people who may go for people who are um, who they're not necessarily um, they don't feel that they can be themselves. They feel that they have to be somebody else because who they are isn't good enough. Yeah. So, you know, they're never quite themselves. It, you know, they might be with somebody who might be um, who might be a little bit more domineering who might be a little bit more kind of um what's the word maybe controlling mm. you know and um but mm. 
you're 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 just you know you're just there you know it's like oh oh no 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 I I'm 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 gonna be okay but you know realistically they're 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 scared of maybe stepping out of that kind of situation and again if you look at maybe their childhood in terms of what do their parents model to them often it's a cycle that's repeating itself it's normalized okay it's normalized yeah that's all they know yeah that's all they know and when you're when they come into the room and they want to do something different or they recognize or they feel some people kind of reside themselves and feel do you know what I feel like I keep attracting these kinds of people yeah. and I don't know why. Yeah. So to then kind of break it down to help them to maybe understand their childhood, mm-hmm. some of the relationships that they've been in so that they can understand that there's a theme mm-hmm. to where they are now, where they're like, why does this keep on happening? Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you want? And it's about asking people, well, what do you want? What do you want that's different? What would you, you know, what do you think is is appropriate? What do you think is not appropriate? Again, it's a lot of self-work and a lot of it is around raising self, self-esteem self and self-worth, Yeah. you know. And then once you start to kind of do that little bit of work where they, where you can start to help people to, I would say, raise their vibrations, they can then look at situations differently yeah. and say actually you know what I want different it's uncomfortable because I don't know what that's going to be like because I've never experienced it but actually that's where I want to go yeah. and yeah. you know that that that's often the challenge but once you get over that challenge you 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 start to see the world in a whole different world in I a whole different way, way you know and yeah a whole different world i hope that it's a whole different world. husband and wives club kind of asks that question which you've just answered uh it was about can you change it along the way and you said it takes a lot yeah. of self-work working yeah. on self-esteem i'm gonna go to the yeah. next one which is dim- dismissive avoidant it said that they avoid true intimacy yeah. uh, they're self-sufficient yeah. they are pushing away from away yeah. from avoidance um okay they shut down um uh, and they have very few close relationships with others yeah so that could be seen as and i don't want to be stereotypical but maybe people that don't engage in serious relationships they have lots of linkages <laughs> yeah lots of different linkages yeah but then <laughs> give, so give, give they'll it, have i've got a current word for linkage because that could be that we could be uh Booty well, call. We, well, we the booty it's call is even. Too. I wouldn't even. I can't even. I can't even say the term. <laughs> but you know, what I mean, we digress. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. So those kind of people, maybe people that you know, Situation- they keep a safe sorry. distance. Situation- Situationships, yeah. But they keep a safe distance, so they don't. They never give their hearts. They'll take yours. They ain't giving theirs and they're in a safe distance. And when it gets a little bit too, when people start, as the word, catching feelings, yeah, that's my time to go. They've got to go. Yeah. Yeah. They've got to go because they can't tolerate being in, you know, in real intimate relationships because it's uncomfortable for them. Maybe that's something that they grew up with, you know, not getting their heart broken. Let me throw this at you. Can you be married and be that dismissive avoidant? Yeah, you can be. Mm. You can be. I think I think you can I think you can get married and I think you can marry a variety of different attachment styles. You know, they can still be married, you know what I mean? And people also have personalities as well. People are maybe not even aware of their attachment styles, you know. That's just the way that I am, you know. I know for me, um, one of my ways was I didn't think that I was very tactile. Mm. Um, but actually, when I had to do lots and lots and lots of work on myself, actually, that's not a true, that's not actually who I am. I'm actually very, very tactile. But there's something that kind of made me feel fearful yeah. of being tactile, of maybe being seen as too sensitive, too soppy, too, you know, yeah. needy, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, it definitely, it definitely can. So now, now yeah. one, so now one partner is looking at the other, and now we're beginning to understand 
you can call it a dysfunction, but that's just the way they are. Um, wow. Now we can understand that that's why someone is, my partner not touching me so much. They're not affectionate. And we go back, just summarizing now, we go back and say, well, hold on. How connected was he with his parent? Maybe mum just always stood over there. Maybe she always pushed him away. He didn't learn it. His dad wasn't even around or his dad was the same. And so forth. And so when, if you're, if for those of us who are in relationships and wondering what the heck has been going on for the last 15, 20 years, here we go. Look, look yeah. back, look back to, to go forward. Look back, man. Yeah. Yeah. The, the last one what I wanted you to touch on before we kind of chop it up even more was fearful avoidant. It said the fear of being too close. I found it's really strange. <laughs> too close and too far at the same time mm. from their lover. So it's ambivalence, isn't it? It's almost like that parent-child. So you're never sure when they're going to be all right. So yeah. you're always you're a bit... In out. You're in and out. You're checking facial experts. You're checking their energy. All right, are they in a good mood today? If not, okay, I'm going to avoid. If they seem like they're in a good mood, okay, I can't. But, you know, yeah. That, so that, but that's a roller coaster. That's, you know, that's a lot of hard work. But that's, that's I can say work. that. I can say that because that's me because that may not necessarily be my attachment style, but somebody who's who lives it, that's their norm. Yes, yes. Because maybe they've never been made to, that means that they've never been made to feel safe and secure. To be settled. And it's yeah. clear, they're unpredictable and they're overwhelmed by their own emotions. Yeah. They have a fear of abandonment and they mm. struggle with being confident with their partner. They are wanting and they are resisting intimacy at the same time. Yeah. Um, they can end up in abusive relationships. Do you know what this reminds me of? Well, so I saw a video on it um, when I studied it a couple of years ago. There was a, an experiment done by Bowlby where one particular child was left in a room by the left, um, their parent left them in the room and the child cried. When the parent came back after five minutes, the child punished the parent mm. by hitting yeah. the parent and, and yeah. was a form of punishment yeah. to say, how dare you leave me? When the parent tried to comfort the child, the child would receive it. When yeah, the, the child said, turned, didn't the child turn away or something right. like that? And when yeah. the parent tried to put the child down now, the child didn't want to be let go. Didn't want to be left, yeah. Bare confusion. So it's like they're yeah. giving off two signals at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me read the, Let me read that that thing again. Wow. Uh, uh, and it says, unpredictable and overwhelmed by own emotions, fear of abandonment, and struggle being confident with their partner. So they're giving off two things at the same time. You don't yeah. know where they stand, yeah. and mm -hmm. so they're they're probably quite impulsive and they make quite rash decisions. Is similar to the. Mm. So mm. it, it is where some some folk are just having trouble processing where they're at. Yeah. So can yeah. you find bits of yourself in all four? Because I've read uh, absolutely, all four and I can see me in all of them. I can see yeah. aspects of my childhood of how I've ended yeah. up in that category, but I can't yeah. relate to one solely. But I can see myself in many of yeah. them. As yeah. you're answering that, there's there's a comment by Merlo Lynn. I'm just going to read. Mm -hmm. um, Marilyn, sorry, sir. It says, attachment styles can often be misconstrued, have I got that right, as tradition yeah, as and true. cultural differences. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You're going we deep, Dr. Phil. We yeah. end up accepting it as a way Beautiful. of being and never, never address it as an attachment issue. Yeah, you can just yeah. Say that, and that's similar, that's yeah. That's how are, isn't it? That's how... Yeah, 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 it's that, that kind of flippant, are, yeah. yeah. I like that. I like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. This is just the way how we do yes, it, professor. you know. Yeah. 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 Indeed. So that was, that was just a brief summary, because obviously Kelly studied this for years, and we just gave a little touch of what the attachment styles are. Although I know people gave us some variations in what they're called, in, in essence and in principle, they're the same. Um, mm. So what do we do? Can We're, we're born of this thing. Yeah. So is that, can is we that change our, it? Is that our lot? No, can change it. Well, hold on. Before it can we be changed. 
people was going to look at me in it. Okay, come on then. I ain't scared. I ain't scared of nobody. <laughs> it's not about being scared. <laughs> All right, so Kelly, hear this out. Hear this one. Okay. I'm, I'm actually coming to you for a free session right now. Right, right, everybody. <laughs> plus, really, uh, plus, really, I just want everyone to know it's real. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I like to consider myself a nice guy. But then when we did read the thing, <laughs> you find myself everywhere. Um, I'll, I'll give you a bit of my history. So, okay. Uh, my mom, right? Mm. I, I, I actually question if we actually bonded. Okay. Do you know what I mean? In terms of in your early years? Yep. So I'm talking okay. up, to age of, uh, up to eight, maybe. Okay. Up, up All to right. seven, up to eight, maybe. Yeah, and and I, and I struggled because I think that I recognised that there was always a bit of a distance. Okay. Um, I think most children will will uh, try to attach to a parent, you know, but mm. when the parents is not available, yeah. And I look back and I can recognise my mum wasn't really available. She was young. So when you say available, are we saying emotionally available, yeah. or both, or physically available? What? She was physically available, but not emotionally. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. And she was young. Does that make when she, sense? When, when she had me, yeah, yeah. So she got pregnant um, at a young age with me. So, so that, and then there was a lot of bad things that happened to her in her past as well. So I can imagine mm. there's a blockage right there. So, yeah. so I remember that as much as she was always there, mm. she wasn't there. Yeah. I know what you mean by that, yeah. And so when I look at myself, I'm looking at myself like there wasn't, because there wasn't really a, what you might call a deep emotional connection. Like, you know, like when mm -hmm. I hear, when I hear some people on TV, like you say a football star um, or anyone famous, it's, the first thing they're going to do is say, or a movie star, and you go, first of all, I want to thank my mom. I love my mom to pieces. I don't feel that. Mm, okay, okay. You get me? It's not that I don't mm. love her. It's just that mm. the emotional connection. So I found myself uh, over the years, I mean, believe me when I say I've changed a lot. Because when okay. we said that we can change our stuff, but I'm still at the core, mm. that person. So I look at yeah. myself as, it's that third one. I think I'm more the third and fourth one at my core, which is, the dismissive avoidant, avoiding intimacy and I'm self-sufficient. Like when uh -huh. I was going through emotional, mental distress, I would deal with it in a corner by myself for yeah. I would always do that. And so, yeah, I get married and you can imagine some of the, the trials that I would have gone through. Yeah. Just take your tongue with me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the trials I would have gone through because I didn't even click. And even if I did know, I wouldn't have been tooled up to deal with it. Okay, yeah. Um, at any time, stop me, you know, or you can just listen. I don't know what you're going to do. No, because I'm just, I'm just, you know, obviously, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just catching, catching the, the flavour yeah. of what's going on. So what I would, okay, so what I would say yeah. Yeah. was yeah. what memories do you have or what information was you given about, you know, what your early years were like and, you know, what was going on? Because that helps us to kind of understand maybe the dismissiveness and you know and and you know usually i i do this over a period of time do you know yeah, what I mean? not yeah, in one yeah. session yeah so you know you feel like that you you don't have a close attachment to your to your mum what was it that made you feel that you didn't have a close attachment to your mum what made you recognize that because i remember her always number one i remember her always being emotionally distant okay and i don't remember intimate s moments mm. okay I have, I have none of that it just didn't happen i know mm. it didn't happen all right who did you go to for kind of you know um soothing you know was your dad was your dad available was your dad emotionally available did you get any kind of no. emotional kind of responses from your dad no Okay, so then that is when you're saying that you're that kind of dismissive, you know, you, you deal with your problems on your own, then that just shows that you 
probably learned as a coping mechanism because in childhood it was an unmet need wasn't it so it's an unmet need that you then manage you you you, you have survival mechanisms as children to manage childhood yeah and difficult situations so if you had unmet needs which your emotions you didn't feel safe and secure you didn't mm -hmm. feel as though your mum understood you your mum you know she didn't make you feel secure you then learn the survival mechanism to i have to self-soothe yeah so self-soothing is i have to go into the corner i can't tell people what's going on i've got to deal with this by myself because that's how i've always done it by myself the problem is is that mechanisms and strategies that we used in childhood to manage unmet needs in childhood you bring that into adulthood it's not the same it's not the same thing you they they, they, they can't work in adulthood because you're older now you have to be able to engage with people especially if you're in a relationship or if you're in a marriage mm. Those strategies are not going to work because what it's then going to do is then it's going to create distance and, you know, it will cause a breakdown. So then I guess it's about trying to understand the, the unmet needs, doing that work. So doing the work would be learning to reparent yourself. Learning to reparent yourself is a tough one because there's no particular way of doing that. So people come into, into the counselling room all the time to kind of look at, you know, their unmet needs. And, you know, when they come into the room and they write, they're going to try and work through it. We try and look at ways of what can they do differently. You know, some of it might be just thinking and holding a meditation or, or writing you know about things that's going on for them as a starting point it just depends on where you're at it just depends on what you're able to do because awareness you know comes in stages do you know what i mean you know people think as soon as you become aware then you're ready no sometimes you know things come you know a bit at a time so you have to kind of work with what you you know what i mean with what you can manage at this point in time because sometimes when we go too far to try and right I'm now going to be this person who's you know going to be completely you know completely different to what I've you know to what open, I was before gonna be I'm gonna be open and sometimes you're not ready for that yet do you know what I mean you've got to take the baby steps you know and it's through understanding and learning about yourself you will learn to understand the things that you need to do for you because as a counsellor, we don't advise, we don't tell you what to do. We bring it out into the open. We'll ask questions based on the energy in the room in terms of what we feel the unconscious is actually, that your unconscious self is actually bringing into the room. We might call that out just to make it be known. And it may be something that you have to kind of hold a meds on for months. And you don't talk about it again until maybe six months down the line. So I've had a client where she came in, you know, kind of wanting to look, look at um, look at, um, difficult relationship with her father and why she found it difficult to even think about getting into a relationship. So we looked at family tree, did genogram, big flip chart paper, and it was an amazing experience of she under, started to understand certain themes that, that ran on both sides of her family. We did that work eight months down the line. It, we went full circle again and she started to then relook at, we had to bring the chart out again because certain things started to come through to her. That was, she was now at a point, she's ready to start addressing these particular parts of herself that although it had been brought out in the open you know, even, you know, maybe eight months ago, she wasn't in the position to start to tackle it. You know, it was open, it was there, but it wasn't ready, you know, to, to, to be touched. So, this, so this is why, this is why, um, I'll come to that comment. This, this is why sometimes you could be arguing as a couple, and, I, and I'm not trying to leave out anyone who's not in a relationship, but as a couple, you can argue over some stuff for years. Absolutely. Because partly you haven't dealt with it, you haven't dealt with the core, 
And, and like you said now, even if you deal with the core, you might have to come back on a year later because you might not be ready. You could become aware. You might not be ready. ready. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because there's something about, um, there's something about conflict. Now conflict isn't in itself isn't bad. Yeah. Mm. Conflict gives you information. It's information as to what, what's coming up for each of you unconsciously. Do you know what I mean? You might be arguing about the clothes, but the clothes isn't actually the thing. It's actually what it represents and what's behind it. Now, conflict can go in either of two ways. Now, intent always kind of um, is, is the motivating factor in your behavior, how you manage the situation. So you're in deal with the content, with, with the conflict is, is brought through in your behavior. So your behavior might be to try and, um, why did you leave the clothes there? You know, it's, it's the way how you deliver the message. Do you know what I mean? It's not the actual message. It's just the delivery style. But, but the other person is then going to react to that. They're doing it from a position of trying to protect themselves, mm -hmm. trying to protect themselves from fear, from pain, from the unknown. But what, um conflicts what what intent is really good you know what we can learn from it is we can actually learn what our actual intentions are when we are con when we're having conflict with each other and how are we going to now resolve this are we going to resolve this because we want to you know we want the result of who's right and who's wrong or are we going to resolve it in a, in a space of Let's try and understand what's behind it. Why is it triggering you? Why does it make you feel like that? You know, what comes up for you? You know, mm -hmm. what questions do you ask yourself? Why am I upset by this? Why mm -hmm. does it make me feel like this? Okay, the messages that I'm feeling, are they actually true? Where's that come from? Do you know what I mean? And that then helps us to then kind of maybe dissect it in a, in a different way and maybe come together to be able to try and deal with kind of conflict differently and and that's just a just a very kind of brief example of how we we start to learn we start to learn about ourselves and 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 how we can really truly be open and bring our 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 true authentic selves out now i know for me i've always been you know, usually I was the hothead, you know, the hothead, anything, people move to the left and, you know, I mean, I'm off like a rocket. Now, what I've had to learn to do is I've had to learn to do different. Why am I so angry? Why do I get so hit up about this? What does, what does it make me feel? What does it make me, what do, what do I think the other person is thinking about me? You know, is it true? You know, is there, is there shame attached to it? Do you know what I mean? And, and I learn, and, and it's these things that I learn about myself, and that's, you know, sometimes what, you know, clients want to do. They just want to understand and learn what's behind their patterns of behavior. Where does it come from? Can they try something different? If they try something different, mm. does, it, does, it, does it work? Will, it, will, will I get a better outcome? Will I feel happier, you know? Will I have a better relationship with my, with, with, you know what I mean, with my mate, with my friend, with my parent, with whoever? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we, we, we just, we learn at, at such different rate. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and that's okay. And not everything needs to be dealt with in the here and the now. Do you know what I mean? Some things we have to leave time to marinate. We need to, you know, just allow things to evolve and come through naturally. I'm just thinking we're, we're so complex, do you know what I mean? There's so much to Very us. complex. And I think, yeah. therefore, sometimes Very what, complex. That, what that can mean is that we need to take time with each other. Take I mean? time. We need to yeah. take time. And sometimes we may not need to bow out where we think we should bow out. That we're like, you know mm. what, let's just mm. hang on. Let's work through this because there's a lot of work to do. And if even if we have bowed out, to be like, all right, let's 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 come back, let's sort it because there's so much digging to do. There's so much stuff we've got to go over. So much. And if we've got time and space, whilst we have breath, we will stay here and work it out and realise that we both got the ish to deal with, but we will and we are working towards understanding ourselves better. And as you yeah. said at the beginning, once we understand ourselves better and love ourselves, we're able to love others. And, and, and I always speak about the greatest commandments that, that, that Christ gave, which was to love God with our whole self and to mm -hmm. love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And in doing mm -hmm. that and in living out that commandment, we actually have to do a lot of work. 
So what's been coming out in the themes and speaking to you and speaking to everybody who we've spoken to so far is that this requires work. It requires grafting. Mm. It requires staying power. Patience. It requires patience. Sometimes it requires reversing decisions and going back. Sometimes it requires yeah. lifting up your skirt and saying, oh, you got one too. Do you know what I mean? It's the same kind of stuff that we are all dealing with. We've got yeah. the belly. You've got the belly. Let's just deal with it. But we've got stuff to do. So some, it, it, it takes patience. I think sometimes people look at relationships. And I kind of hate that hashtag, relationship goals. Yeah. Um, some people have applied it to us sometimes. I think you have no idea <laughs> of the work that we have to do here, of the digging that we have to do, of how far we have to go back to painful places. But people are not honest, though. But people They're are not. not but this is this is the problem, and this is about the importance of vulnerability and yeah. transparency. Yeah. Because when I see you know clients come into into the, into the room, they often compare themselves to others and thinking that others are having a better time than they are. Yeah. And my thing is, you have no idea what is yeah. going on in somebody else's life. Yeah. Because we all have a, you know, and I suppose coming from that kind of Caribbean kind of background, you know, you had to, you know, keep up with the Jones. You couldn't let your business, you know what I mean? Don't let people know your business. And you know, nobody was able to be honest. And I believe that there were a lot of very, very unhappy people yes. walking around, you know. Yeah. And I had to, you know, you you kind of look at it and you think, actually, is that the kind of life that I'd like to live? Do you know what I mean? I just think that, you know, no, I want to be happy. I want to be happy for me, yeah. first and foremost. That is yeah. the most important thing. Before any kind of relationship, like in terms of intimate relation or whatever, it's so important to be happy within yourself. You know, once you're happy within yourself, you know, can, you've got an I, abundance of love to show around. Go can, I, can I say this, right? Hmm. Um, I look at that, the, the, the four attachment styles. I'm, there's a bit of me in all of them. Yeah. And that's because I'm changing all the mm. time. Um, but I know at my core what I am. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually constantly kind of battling, which the battle is not like necessarily me sweating, it's just me just being aware and remembering before I open my mouth. And that's it. Before I sweat. But that's and, it. And for me, you know, you know one of the, the most powerful things for me that has really helped me is that I just don't care what anyone thinks anymore. That's what I'm happy to. I haven't Absolutely. I'm, happy to, I'm happy to give much more information about my life. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. What your opinion is you know what yeah. i'm getting fixed up and the thing that kind yeah. of freed me up to say you know what i'm actually trying to get well um is that not comparing mm -hmm. and not caring about other people it's just me absolutely it's, it's just me yeah. like and i think yeah just me. That, but that's I'm how it needs to be as well but it's just me i'm like but, you know what but you have to start with you though isn't it yeah and you know what helped me i'm just like you know what I don't even know you or I know you. I'm a mess. Let me show yeah. you where I'm coming from. Let me show you where I'm going. Mm. I'm not there yet. Yeah. And that, let me yeah. tell you, man, I feel like I've got wings. <laughs> yeah, you do. Hold yeah. on, I'm just seeing a comment. Oh, Bailiana, my girl, hey. Single people aren't necessarily scared of dick. It's finding someone you're willing to do that work with. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm get her on one, one day, you know. I don't no, Yeah, you have to get, get your beat on there. Okay, so there's another one here. Uh, are there any therapy would never be able to change? For instance, not liking the way your partner may eat. <laughs> Is that just <laughs> being picky? Even eat. if, even if the annoyance is true in childhood, all you can do therapy. Therapy just shines a light. Therapy isn't. I I say that you know. The, the the actual individual is the one that does the work therapy we're just we're just facilitators we're just here to hold your hand through the journey do you know what I mean and you know reflect what you're feeling what you're thinking you know we don't necessarily offer advice we we might call things out we might question things and we might maybe attach a little bit of theory to it but it's down to the individual to make that change and 
that change, wherever the changes may need to be made, will need to be made by the individual. So, yeah, with whoever. I know for me that to start with me, I couldn't rely, I couldn't blame anybody else, you know. Yeah, you know, obviously there's things that could have that could have been different, but the reality is is that I, I had to be the change that I wanted to see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and that's the bottom line. Is it Marilyn? The work of a relationship is is a reciprocal this is a team spirit. Yes, it's true. And as well, it also depends on where you're at in your journey of life because there might be couples that are together and obviously everybody's at different parts of the journey but sometimes with some couples the distance between is actually quite toxic yeah. and it you know and, and decisions have to be made again that's not mm. a decision that you know would be taken lightly and that's not a decision that a counsellor would make you know we would kind of question and ask you know what do you think and I always say to my client go and hold a meds on that you don't actually need to answer that now go and hold a meds on that and when I say hold a meds people I mean that you know <laughs> think about it you know however long you need to think about it and people will often come back and say actually having thought about it yeah you know maybe this is what I need to do so, you know, so that's the way how, you know, how I kind of, how I kind of view it. I try my hardest not to get in the middle of people's there's decision another, making. There's another comment by Brigitte. Oh, yeah. Dealing with yourself brings true, amen, true freedom. And it allows you to see your way clear to look around. Absolutely. Do you know how wonderfully freeing it is to do the work in yourself now I remember always hearing about do the work do the work what does that mean now I know for me I can't even think of specifics there's 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 been so many different things that have happened that's brought me to the place of true freedom of being who it is that I want to be and not caring about whether people like me or don't like me yeah. perfectly fine you know so yeah it's i think regret is right in 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 saying that it it has to start with self and what happens is is once you start self it impacts all of your relationships i was just gonna it say it has that. an impact mm -hmm. it has an impact mm -hmm. people then start to because you're you're no longer you no longer respond in the same way so it's almost like you know if you've got a pattern or a way of how you used to do things yeah and you no longer you know you no longer um kind of do it that way anymore yeah. so you then have to get used to you know a new way of how somebody else is doing it do you understand so yeah you you just have such a such a, a positive impact on other on, on other people. And I never forget a friend of mine saying that when I started to change, I remember saying, I think people thought I was crazy. Why? Because Why I was Because you know what? Again, like I said, I was a bit hot I did. Because she's calm, so that means... You when I say crazy, because I'm now calm, <laughs> I'm now talking, oh, that really hurt me, I'm not cussing and making noise no more, you know, you know within reason. Yes. But, you know, I deal with conflict differently now. So I'm asking questions. I'm saying maybe I'm wrong, but this is how it made me feel, you know. But it's like, well, okay. Th again, you... You, you, when you change, people around you change as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And often it's it's for the better. So yeah. Like Brigitte said, yeah. Um, "It's all about me liking me." And Absolutely. I feel that there are. We don't give ourselves a moment to to even check that. Like, yeah. do I like myself? Yeah. We don't give ourselves yeah. a, a moment to hear the answer back, because to yes. hear the answer back means you you got to sit with it. And you've got to do something about it. Absolutely. Because you can't run yeah. from yourself. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't like No you. heat and no oh, judgment. You're yeah. Here. You're still here. You ain't gone yet. Do you know what I mean? Because if I'm not liking someone, no I'm not in your company. But if I'm not yeah. liking myself and I'm in my own space, 
that's got to be difficult. From yourself. You can't run from yourself. Yeah. So you either do yeah. the work or you, you, you implode, do you know what I mean? So Cameron says, if you don't like, Mr. Merlo Lynn says, if, if you, you don't, like, don't you, like you, who you, should? Why should, yeah. should I? And so therefore, mm -hmm. as you said, Kelly, if you're giving it off, people will change and respond to that. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like you, you will give that off. And you may be treated accordingly. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, yeah. it's, it's work all around. Do you but know what I mean? I'm, I'm thinking that those of us who are with someone... Sorry, God, I feel like I'm leaving out all the, the people that are single. I'm sorry, no, man. No, no, no. It's, it, okay, fine. So it, it, I'm, I'm thinking that if you're with someone and you don't like how they are, you still have to mm -hmm. check yourself about... Absolutely. Who, because Too really, great. a lot Even of the time... So. Just, just fixing yourself a little bit can instigate the change in the other person. But that takes some blouse and skirt patience. What's it saying there? Waste that story. I ask you to name the things if you I, like. Oh, if, if I ask you to name I'll, the things you like, how long would it take you to say your... I'm lost. Uh, What's that? How long would it take you oh, to say your oh, oh. I could say Victoria Sandwich. I could say Cola Cubes. I could say horse racing. Smoking, running, bike riding, but when in that will I say I like myself? Popcorn. Yeah. Popcorn. I, I don't mean that smoking, but yeah, popcorn's the truth. Um, yeah. So it's like. But it's true. That's a really true statement. Yeah. Would you actually say. Yeah. Would you actually say that I like me? I like and do you know something? Mm. So there, there might be some. So sometimes, um, you know, some clients, they, they want to try and think about ways of even just liking themselves or just thinking that they're okay. Because sometimes loving yourself goes a little bit too far for some people when they're starting off and trying to you know, work themselves out. Okay, what can you do to even like yourself? So I, I kind of, you know, say, I wonder what, it, you know, if you were to keep a little journal and just write down some of the things that you recognize, positive things that you recognize about your characteristics. If, if you could write it in a journal and every time you recognize something, write it down. And you will probably end up with a book full of things, positive things that you can say about yourself. And, you know, that is such a powerful, that's that powerful work that you can actually do, you know, for yourself. And that yeah. in itself can end up becoming an affirmation or something that you can repeat yeah. to yourself daily, you know? So, yeah. That is, that's a good exercise. I mean, I'm, I always think, in times that I don't like my myself, I always say, or I'm in between somewhere, I think I always consider that there is not another one of me on this planet. Um, yeah, there wasn't right. before, and there will not be to we'll come. So be, um, I, have, mm -hmm. I, I have something to offer, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Whether I'm liking yeah, myself yeah. or not, so I better just yeah. fix it, because somebody needs yeah. something that I have for this time, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, absolutely. So, We've all got purpose. Well, yeah, we're all yeah, important yeah. we, we we're true. all we're all we're all necessary you know what we have and what we bring to the table and who we are is important you know yeah, yeah, and yeah. um i remember just the other day actually covid has been a really really good time actually because i've definitely grown closer to my daughters than than mm. i maybe before and my my seven-year-old came up to me and she said you know something mommy i love you just the way you are you don't have to be anybody else but just you you're perfect as you are yeah. i wanted to cry yeah. Yeah. i really wanted to cry because for me that was a true testament to some of that hard work you know counseling you know people sometimes get it twisted and think that counselors don't have problems you know you know oh. we're human beings i just want to remind everybody we're human beings we go through everything that everybody else goes through um and it's tough mm. and often what comes into the counseling room is like a mirror you're yes. holding a mirror up to yourself your clients reflect who you are and that can be really really tough going do you know what I mean and sometimes I you know sometimes I can be hard on myself and think oh no, Kelly do you know what I mean and I then have to then get back into that mode of you know okay come on Kels you've got to start remembering who you are again and to have my daughter you know kind of say that I've thought you know what what a beautiful compliment and yeah. i and i try to instill that in them that they're beautiful they're you know perfect just the way that they are 
that, you know, there'll never be another them, you know, that, you know, anybody who says that they don't like you, forget them. You love yeah. you and, you know what I mean, those yeah. kind of things. I never got that as a child. Yeah. I never got that as a child. I, my parents, I think they tried to give the affirmations, you know, you need to do something with your life. Yes. You can't <laughs> you be know? a Go and get a stuck in shelf. Stuck in shelf. You know what That's I mean? Get her education. Saying. Do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Buy a house. I think that was their way of almost trying to affirm us. Do you know what I mean? But it wasn't helpful at all. No, it wasn't. It wasn't because helpful. you know what? You used to yeah. hold the licks after parents' evening first. <laughs> Standard. Every parents' evening. That was... That was that oh. was like I was going in the firing squad, mate. Every single one. Everyone, I got lit up. Mm. You get me? And then yeah. after you would yeah. get the talk from the mum, dad, and the auntie or the uncle who was passing through the yard to go yeah. and catch his five pound a draw, who would sit there at the same time and say, You don't want to be in Tesco stuck in <laughs> shells. <laughs> And that, and was, that was their way of affirm. doing it. That was them. That was that was yeah. that was affirmations as far as they were concerned. You know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah. and I just think that you know, I think we're trying. I think we're living in a time now that we're trying to do different. Yeah. Um, we're trying to we're trying to have better relationships with ourselves in order to have better relationships with each other. I really yeah. feel yeah. that that's what's happening now. Yeah. I think, especially within the black community therapy is not so much a taboo word anymore no. you know we're really new, starting to embrace word, it right? yeah. it's a new buzzword and we're yeah. actually starting to embrace it and i think do you know something this is how we start to heal you know generational trauma this is how we start to be able to solve you know you know from a positive standpoint regardless of what maybe you know society may deem us as do you know what i mean this yeah. is how yeah. we engage and have better relationships with one another and and be accountable to each other do you know what i mean you know you're moving mad we let's try and figure this out it's yeah. not like to shame you but you know actually let me help me to understand help me to understand where you're coming from mm -hmm. let me you know so that you know let's try and let's try and do this differently maybe i'm talking maybe i'm being a bit airy fairy but you know that's the way how i personally like to live my that's life do you know what i mean i that's try it. my hardest i mean i mean even as even as believers we're even attaching and saying jesus plus therapy do you know what i mean it's okay to mm -hmm. do the both mm -hmm. Um, and, and I've, I've, I've been, yeah, I've benefited from from therapy, but 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 then it was a we just we're going I'm going counselling secretly, <laughs> and now it's like no, I, I remember sitting with a a, a counsellor. She was a, a Christian counsellor, a white lady, had all these um, beads on her, looked like she was about to do a séance, but she was a uh, you know she was a, a, a believer. Mm. She said to me, I, I spoke about attachment and my father not having a father from you said to you was 13 mine was from i was 11. yeah and she says mm. oh no you're not gonna get a dad again and i just thought uh you should be telling me that you should be telling me at 35 that you're gonna get a dad but she brought mm. a reality to my life that day even though i didn't understand her style of counseling because i thought she was just there to listen mm. but she spoke and mm. she said no you're not going to get a dad, but mm. this is what you can do from here. Yeah. But that hard, it's about, that, again, that hard hitting was. It's hard. It's about, free, again, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's the whole reparenting yourself, isn't it? Because yeah. you can't go yeah. back in childhood no. and undo and undo that's what's it. already been done. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's the bottom line. And that's something yeah. that, you know, you know, sometimes we, we, we have to be honest about, well, the, this, whatever's happened is now happened you know what i mean how do we move from here what is the unmet need have how can you give feed your you know yourself that unmet need so parenting yourself as opposed to giving that responsibility to somebody else and then they're not going to meet your expectation and then you're going to then feel low do you know what i mean it then becomes a, a cycle so it's mm -hmm. about again you know it's within you know and again it, it what it promotes creates is a is, is a feeling of freedom you know i'm just looking at this question would mm -hmm. you say that they didn't know better and that 
might just have been a way of expressing it. You're probably talking about when, um, was you know, in terms of our parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know. Yeah, it was their only way. They didn't yeah. have, do you know something? They didn't have language. They didn't have any more literacy, you know. They didn't have the literacy to pass down to us, you know. It would be, you know, if you if you look at the history of, you know, of our people in terms of slavery, we were treated like cattle mm. with no feelings. Mm. We were split from our families. Mm. We were raped and pillaged and, you know, the whole shebang. So there was no, there was no emotional literacy there, you know, mm. and that's, you know, been over time. That's, these are things that are passed down intergenerationally, you know, to us. And we then have to then learn the language, the emotional language, you know, to be able to, to articulate ourselves in a way so that we can then express ourselves so people can, can hear I, us and we'll be forever screaming and fight, fight, you know? Yes, yes, Curtis. Can I make this point? Understand. We've only got a couple of minutes left on this live. Mm. I just want to make this point and then... You've got 13 minutes. 13? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I'm, re I'm reading it wrong. Mm. Um, I think that... No. I 11 minutes. I, I think that um, I challenge what you're saying, but I still agree with you in that. What are you challenging, Curtis? Sorry, sorry, Kelly, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what all I right. Do. Challenge, this challenge, challenge, challenge all the way. This is my attack to start coming through. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think that people can only give what they have. And so if they have poor emotional literacy um we can know better but for some reason we're making we're making a very conscious mistake that we don't know how to stop making so i don't think that people mm. are always unaware some people mm. are so in the same way we look at people who end up in these stupid relationships these abusive relationships mm. they can do they know what they're doing in the same way, it's not that they don't know, I think. I think that some people are just, this is the safest thing. This is the only thing I trust. So I know it's going to be bad, but it's better than being alone. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I, I would challenge you mm. on that. I'm challenging you. Mm. I'll challenge you on that. Because if that's your norm, if that's your norm, that's your, your genuine norm, yeah. then that's your attack. You don't do know. You, you, you genuinely do know don't know anything music. different. So, no, but not everybody. Not everybody knows that, though. It's it's it. Sometimes it takes time. Do you, do you know what I mean? And you know, it's 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 not an easy. It's not an easy process. Did you get what I'm saying? So, I think we have to be able to kind of you know understand that we we all come from different of life and 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 what we see as normal. Somebody else may not see it as normal. Do you understand? Doesn't necessarily mean that it's appropriate, but. We, we we see, we view, and we understand things differently because mm -hmm. our our blueprint is different. Our setup mm -hmm. is has all been it's all been different. It's mm -hmm. as we start to kind of you know mingle with the types of people we you know we go to school we you know go to you know whatever you know you then start to learn and understand and sometimes you know it may take years for you to gather the strength and and to realize actually. Is this what I want to live? Is this what I want to I want to be in for the rest of my life? You know, and you know, once those questions start to come to the surface, then we're then 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 we're moving to a different level. Do you know what I mean? We can then maybe start to move towards actually, I'm going to move away from from this kind of relationship, or I'm going to start to look at myself and understand my patterns a bit different. I want to attract something different. Do you know what I mean? First, you've got to be aware that actually this is this isn't right. Do you know what I mean? So not every. Mm. Hold on, husband and wife club. I also think it's not always about what happened to you as a child that matters most. It's how you deal with it in adulthood. Many people can go from victim to overcomer. Absolutely. However, maybe I'm looking at it. You know maybe I'm going a bit deep, the, a lot of the core of some of our values, they, they, they do come from childhood. There are, some, there are some experiences that we have experienced 
you know, along the way that may have, you know, pushed us in a in, in a different direction. Do you know what I mean? But we do have to look at childhood is definitely a, a really big blueprint. Yes. And it helps that they say that the most formative years are like from naught to seven when the personality is formed. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I agree and I don't agree with that. But, you know, yeah, I'm, that would I'm conscious of the another. time. And so yeah. I just wanted to know if you could give us some. Um, just a few tips. Um, in working through our understanding our attachment styles. I know it's a big one, a big ask to do in like five minutes, in three minutes. But understanding our oh attachment, how do, we, how do we understand our attachments and what do we do to move into a more healthy attachment? Like you've got like... I guess I'm just, okay. Oh gosh, understanding our attachment is maybe looking at our history, looking at our yeah. family history, looking at mm. the way how people around us have engaged in relationships. Can we see similarities? Can we say actually, yes, um, actually how I want to be or no this is not how I want to be are we happy within ourselves um, do we see a need for us to change do we want to do we want something different or do we want more of the same you know rushing here but um, yeah it, no again it all starts with self and what it is that you actually want you know and if you want something different from what you're from what you're getting currently then Again, it's about having to look within. How do I get that difference? Okay. And wow. doing doing that work. So it, is, so it's it might doing be reading, work. praying. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's doing the work. And the, the doing the amazing. work can can be can be different for different different types of people. You actually so, summarised that yeah. really, really, really well. well. Really well. <laughs> do you know what I don't really? want, I oh. want to end without you promoting your? Um, your um practice without you promoting your new um ig page so can you also do that for us yes i've got a new instagram page called oh. inner transitions nice. say again, say again. Skin, yeah? say again say in again in a in a inner transitions is my new um page that's dedicated to kind of like my counseling kind of practice um where I'll probably offer kind of maybe words of comfort, just some things for people to maybe ponder on. People can DM me possible for uh, online kind of um, sessions. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's where we're at. We're starting that's, out. Yes. I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. No, yeah. listen, thank you, man. It's a lot of work you've done tonight. I don't think um, it, it, when it comes mm -hmm. to talking about therapy and being a therapist as well and that's your second job. Um, you have really yeah. stretched yourself. So uh, we appreciate what you've done tonight, man. And I think tonight you're going to you're gonna sleep good. You're going to sleep good. You, know? <laughs> you, you ran with it. You know what I mean? There were some difficult questions what came up. Yeah. And you ran with those questions. You, you answered the questions really well. I'm and, not trying. and you also provided a space for people to um, tap into, for people to um, yeah. work out the, the work to do the inner transition. So it's being put up there by Mr. Merlo Lynn. Yeah. All the details you need uh, to find Kim. Yeah, yeah, nice one. And to use, <laughs> to use her services because she is, she is good. And if you've just joined us, you've missed some gems, but you can go back and, and listen to, we'll to the live. We'll and this will be on YouTube because um, we've had oh, no brilliant. interference with the, with the Wi-Fi. But before, before we go, I have to let you know about tomorrow, guys. Um, tomorrow we're talking about Unmet, unmet expectations and faith. So this is my friend Valerie. She's actually watching now. She's going to talk about something very deep, very deep about unmet expectations and her Ooh. faith. Oh man! See you tomorrow at nine p.m. I think it's going to cut now. It's definitely going to cut now. Isn't it? Yeah, but we won't wait for it to cut out. Okay, we're going to wait for that too, guys. Kelly. Thank you. Have a good night, man. Thank Kelly, you. thank you. You too. So much. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys for staying with us um, and learning um, today about attachment styles and how we can. Um... <laughs> Don't worry about it. How we can bring those into our everyday lives and fix up and move through to other more healthier attachment styles. Mm. I've learned a lot. 
Uh, I hope you have, and I'll be putting in the work. We'll be putting in the work. You more than me. No, you more than me. So thank you. And thank you, Kelly, for um, just giving your expertise. Thank you for all of you who are supporting. And if you are interested, on fe interested in featuring, you can always DM us and speak to us. Or if you have any recommendations, let us know. We are always open and willing to have these free conversations just to help our communities and help our families, do you know what I mean? And help each other. So thank you. We'll get us laughing at us. Eddie's laughing, they're all laughing. laughing. Frenchie's laughing. Valerie's laughing. What's up, funny? So before you laugh anymore, let's move the camera up. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like news reporters. You know, and you can only see the top and you don't know what going on underneath. So the camera is supposed to stay from here up. Everyone on live, just like news reports. Everyone on live is is wearing brief, uh, yeah, um, and and a brief and a top and a, and, a, and, a, and a smart top, yeah, set for me. So that's why we have to keep the camera, keep a level eye.